Hi all. So in the previous lecture, we have seen classical waterfall model. So in this lecture, we will see about iterative waterfall model. So in the classical waterfall model, we have already seen that there is a sharp transition from one phase to another phase like this. So if uh, after requirements, it will be designed. After design, it will be coding. Like that, there will be staff transition. So we'll after uh, requirement specification, we'll give that SRS document. It will be given to the design team. Designers will design uh, using that SRS document, and they will give it to the coding team. Like that, it will go on. So once one phase is completed, we cannot go back to that phase. So that is a problem with this classical waterfall model. In iterative waterfall model, there is a feedback mechanism. So we can see a feedback path from all its phase to its preceding phase, except to the feasibility study. Because once feasibility study is complete, we will not go back to the feasibility study and say that uh, we want to change this thing or anything, or we want to drop this project. Like that, we won't be doing. So once feasibility study is completed, we will say that this fall project is feasible and it can be done. Or if it is infeasible, it cannot be done. So we can't go back to the feasibility study. Except to that phase, all other phases, there is some feedback path. Okay, so this feedback is important because if we do some uh, coding or uh, when we do some coding and when we do that unit testing only, we will understand that there is some error that has occurred. So it is always possible some errors might occur. So we have to change the design. Generally, that error can be detected. So we'll go back to the design phase and we'll try to correct that errors. So there is a feedback uh, from a uh, phase to the preceding phase so that such kind of errors can be corrected. Okay. So that is why there is a feedback path uh, for correcting this uh, errors. Okay. So there will be a, for, uh, it provides a feedback path from every phase to its preceding phase. So that is the advantage of this iterative waterfall model. So if there is some error that has occurred, we can go back to a preceding phase and correct those errors and return to the phase. So we will define a term uh, known as phase containment of errors. So it is the principle of detecting errors as close to their points of commitment. So whenever we try to detect those errors and we try to correct those errors at the point of commitment itself, that error won't get propagated. That is the advantage of this phase containment of errors. So if we could correct or detect our errors in that phase itself, it will be better. So it is always possible that errors or faults or bugs can occur in a software. It is because uh, programmers make some errors. So what happens is uh, designers might make some errors, but that design error might be detected only after that system testing is performed. Then the problem is we have to go back and correct the design document. Again, we have to code it. Again, after that, again, you have to test it. So if we could uh, find out that error with the design phase itself, we can correct it and move forward. Then finally, during testing, that error won't be detected. So it will be better if we could contain those errors in that phase itself. This is known as phase containment of er errors. The, the problem here is we have only some documents to detect these errors. So initially after requirement specification, we have an SRS document. After design, we have a design document. So based on this document only, we have to detect these errors. We call that as validation. So after SRS is completed, there is a requirements validation team who will be validating this document. They will be checking whether this requirement is complete, whether there is any inconsistency between these requirements are there. So document will be validated. Similarly, after the completion of design, that design document will be validated to check for errors. So if we could check those errors, if we could correct those errors there itself, then it would be better. So that is known as phase containment of errors. Then another important thing is uh, phase overlap. So usually uh, in softwares, uh, there will be a phase overlap. There will be overlap between these phases. If I draw a curve like this. So if I draw a curve between effort and time, 
so this is f1 and this is type so i am drawing a curve between f1 and type if i take each phase so initially there will be a feasibility study so it will be like this initially there won't be much effort then it goes on like this effort will decrease then if we take uh, after that we will start the requirement specification so requirement specification we have it will be like this then after that we have the design team so they their effort will be like this then we have the coding team then we have the testing so this is feasibility study this is requirement specification then this is design this is coding and this is testing so this will the curve will be like this so uh, when you see the uh, waterfall model it is there will be a sharp transmission with transition between the phases so as soon as, soon as this srs is completed that phase is marked as complete and we'll give this document to the design team but in real scenario it is not like that so even after the feasibility study is completed uh, there will be a phase overlap between the requirements and the feasibility study or even after the srs is completed marked as complete uh, when the design begins there will be an overlap between these things because some errors might have been detected during this design phase so what you have to do is we have to go back to the required space and we have to correct those errors similarly during coding stage also we might detect some errors we have, may have to change the design so during testing also or during coding we might have to change the requirement so there is always a phase overlap between these phases because of these uh, uh, errors the errors can be detected at any point of time so uh, when later in later phases if we detect some errors we have to go back to the previous preceding phase and correct those errors so there will be an overlap between these phases but in the classical waterfall model we consider that there is no phase overlap so actual case there will be phase overlap okay this phase overlap is some to some extent only uh, it is not at all supported in this iterative waterfall model also so usually the software scenario is like this only okay some extent uh, it is supported here then uh, another important reason of phase overlap is uh, if we if we check the design document that design will be done by a different team or the coding will be done by different team it's a team thing so we will give uh, modules we will be separating into two different modules and uh, each module will be programmed by different persons or the design will be done by different persons so what happens is uh, some designers might be very fast they will complete their works within seven days so maybe one person if i give the same srs document to three designers and ask them to uh, design uh, one module i'll giving i'll be giving three modules to three different persons the first person might complete within one week another person might take two weeks another person might take 10 days so there is a time difference so what happens is the first person has to wait for the other two persons to complete so it is an idle time so in order to avoid this idle time what we do is when the first person completes his work it will be given to the coding team to code it when the second complete work person completes then it will be given then the third person completes it will then it will be given to the coding team so there is always a phase overlap we cannot say that we will start the work only after the full design is complete so whenever uh, some modules are complete it will be given to them otherwise there will be an idle environment so so most certain people will be always idle so there is always a phase overlap be, uh, between these phases so this is not at all supported in this iterative waterfall model okay so we have seen this iterative waterfall model we will see the short case so in 1970s and 80s this iterative waterfall model was used uh, for all the software development because in those days uh, software was developed from scratch so we will start from initial stage itself but nowadays softwares are not developed like that because uh, we uh, code reuse reusability is there so we try to develop reusable codes and this reusable codes are there in our library so when we develop a new software we'll take this code uh, codes already existing codes will be taken to our code we'll copy it and we'll be doing it 
so that code usability is not considered in this iterative waterfall model so that is the thing and uh, nowadays so nowadays softwares are do basically doing code reusability so that is not supported in this thing the first disadvantage is shortcoming is difficult to accommodate change requests so uh, as soon as the requirements are completed as soon as the srs document is completed we say that it is frozen that is we cannot make any changes in the srs document the customers cannot say that mm, i need to change something as soon as the srs is complete it's marked as complete uh, we cannot make any changes so it is very difficult to accommodate those changes the customers business might change after some time customers requirements might change during the development process but uh, those change requests will not be accepted at all so that is a one of major shortcoming it is difficult to accommodate change requests okay so we cannot modify the requirements that is a major shortcoming of this uh, then second disadvantage is incremental delivery not supported so the problem is when we develop a software it might take 6 months or 1 year to complete the project the customer has to wait till that 6 months or to 1 year to complete in order to see his product that is a problem so incremental delivery is not good so if we could deliver some increments like that if you give them the graphical basic basic that gui interface will be like this if we give that to the customer then the customer will be able to see it and he can say Uh, that we need some modification like that but here it is not at all support in a straight to waterfall model the customer has to wait for 6 months or 1 year to see his product so after that 6 months or 1 year the customer's requirements might have changed or his business might have changed so that is one of the shortcoming if we could incrementally deliver some parts of the software then it will be better nowadays we deliver uh, the software in incremental uh, incremental as incremental software okay so that is as as a shortcoming incremental delivery is not supported in iterative waterfall model then phase overlap is not supported in iterative waterfall model as in the classical waterfall model uh, here we are consider there is a step transition from one phase to another phase there won't be any phase overlap we cannot say that there will be a phase overlap as as far as is completed it, it is marked as complete and it will give given to the design team slight errors small errors only can be corrected we can go back and correct those things but the actual case there will be a phase overlap we have already seen the curve when we develop a software there is always a phase overlap but this is not supported in iterative waterfall model and another disadvantage is uh, it error correction is expensive error correction is uh, expensive because Uh, if we try to uh, we are not uh, phase containment is not there in somewhat some extent only that phase containment error is not is there but after delivering uh, if we try to correct when the software errors might be found out only during the testing stage so if we find the errors during that stage we have to again go back change the design we have to change the coding we have to again test it so what happens is uh, schedule will Uh, schedule will be lost so we will be delivering it the software lately so if that delivery is uh, delayed what happens is the cost will increase so cost because that much amount uh, software programmer salary we have to do or the effort we have to take everything will be counted and the software cost will be more so error correction we will get the we will find out errors only in the later stages that is during testing only we could detect these errors So that is another shortcoming of this iterative waterfall model, and there is limited customer interaction. So only at the initial stage if there is customer interaction, the customer interacts with the company uh, when he says his requirements only. So uh, later on there is no interaction between the customer. The customer doesn't know what is happening inside the thing. So that is not a good. Thing. So limited customer interaction is another shortcoming of this model. then heavy weight this uh, model is considered as heavy weight because uh, documentation is important everything should be documented that srs document should be great then that design document is should be complete so uh, heavy weight means the documentation uh, we have to give much more effort to the documentation 
so that documentation is important and you have to give much effort to the documentation so this is considered as a heavy weight model another disadvantage is there is no support of risk handling and code reuse there is no support for risk handling and code reusability we cannot handle risk there are other models which can handle risk and code reusability is not at all there we cannot reuse the existing code so that is not supported in iterative waterfall model we consider that software is started is uh, uh, developed from scratch itself so these are the shortcomings of this model so the shortcomings of iterative waterfall model thank you